Um, welcome everybody. Uh, finally game week. I think everybody's more excited probably than I am at this point, but uh, we are uh, uh, thrilled to uh, be able to uh, uh, be, be uh, uh, heading down to Atlanta on Saturday to uh, take place in a, in a, in a, in a game that, that will be considered one of the top games in the country coming up here this weekend. So uh, we're, we're fired up about it. Our, 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 our players are in a really good spot at this point. Uh, I think the overall health of our program, health of our team is, is, is as good as it's been. We got through 25 practices over the last four weeks and, and uh, have been put ourselves in a position to where we feel really good about, about taking on uh, a, a quality opponent in Alabama. Um, don't need to really say much about, about our opponent as far as uh, what they've accomplished over the last few years. We're, uh, you know, pretty excited to be able to be in this situation to be able to play a game of this uh, magnitude. Our guys are, are are thrilled with the opportunity to be able to go down to Atlanta to be able to play um, in in this game. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Saban's body of work speaks for itself. Uh, he, you know, they they've been playing at a very high level here for the last uh, six years. I think he's lost seven or eight games over that span. So, um, you know, they're they're an outfit that's tough to beat. Our guys understand that. Um, you know, and uh, look forward to uh, the opportunity to be able to uh, uh, get it on on Saturday. Uh, starting with their offense, uh, a lot's been it been made about their quarterback spot. Uh, I think too much has been made about their quarterback spot. Uh, they got two guys that that are going to be able to run their offense. To me, you know, with with um, you know with Coach Kiffin coming in, I mean, I've known Lane for a long time and has uh, has a, a great history of being able to coach some pretty good offenses. Uh, I don't think that what they do offensively is going to change a whole bunch. They, they you know, uh, and Coach Saban has an idea of what he wants to do on all three sides of the ball within his program, and and uh, they they have they have fantastic players around them. They got three running backs that that they could go to each one of them and have the ability to be able to score quickly. Uh, you know, they got big kids up front. Three of the five starters coming back. Uh, they say they're starting a true freshman. Uh, and then I figured out he was the number one player in the country, and he was there all spring. So I don't really consider him much of a true freshman. But uh, you know, they got big people up front. They got an all-American tight end, three receivers that that have played a lot of ball for him that can score. So uh, there's a bunch of talent around the quarterback spot. And you know, they probably more than likely play both. They say they're going to play both, so I would anticipate that happening. And and much like we're going to do with the, each one of our positions, whichever guy plays better, we're probably going to. We're probably going to play that guy more. Uh, so I, I would, I would, I would, I, you know, I, we're anticipating play, uh, anticipating playing both, but uh, I don't think that's going to change really what they're going to be doing on offense. Uh, defensively, um, you know, when you think of an Alabama team, when you think of Coach Saban, it's going to be defense. Kirby Smart's been their DC for a long time, been with with Nick for a long time. They do a great j uh, job of, of recruiting top-notch talent. Uh, big, fast, strong guys. Uh, some of the better players in the country each and every year. Uh, you know, uh, lose guys in the NFL every year, and then they just replace them with guys that have been in the program, and those guys go to the NFL. So, um, you know, they have five, six starters coming back. Um, you know, and, and have uh, you know a good nucleus of guys that that have played a lot of ball for them. Looking back on their tape from last year, uh, you know, you see about twenty some guys playing. Uh, those snaps last year, so uh, you know they lost some real good ones to the NFL, but they got a lot of guys that are going to continue to get better and develop into the caliber of players that they're used to. Um, special teams has always been a, 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 a huge uh, emphasis for them. Uh, you know they they they're probably just the opposite of what we are from their their specialists. Uh, you know they're replacing a punter, they're replacing a kicker. Uh, but they have uh, one of the best return guys in the country coming back, and Christian Jones uh, was an All-SEC, All-American punt and kick returner. Uh, ha have more than him. Uh, DeAndre White's a, 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 a one of their receivers that has the ability to be able to score as well. Um, so they, they have a great return game. Uh, I, I think the biggest uh, question mark with them special teams-wise is, is the punter and the kicker because they're replacing some good guys that they had last year. But... The emphasis is going to be there. They've always been good. They got, they got great depth. They got great talent to where they can put guys on special teams in, in order to be successful. Uh, so, that that's the way I view them. Uh, you know, like I said, it's it's uh, it's going to be an exciting week for our fan base to be able to 
to make the trip down to Atlanta. It's something that we've been looking forward to for a long time, uh, not only within the building here, but as a fan base as well. And, and uh, you know, certainly going to do everything in our power to be able to put our best foot forward to be able to come out of there with the victory. So with that, we'll uh, take some specific questions. With, uh, with a, they've got a new offensive coordinator, you've got a new defensive coordinator. Uh, you, you, you spend most of your time on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, how do you turn that over to Tony? I mean, do you have full control of the game, or do you make suggestions, or how does that work? No, I mean, there, there is always going to be conversations uh, that take place during the course of, uh, of, of the week. Uh, you know, as far as what, how, you know, I ask his advice, I ask Coach DeForest, Coach Bradley, I mean, all these guys, some, some uh, advice on what they would do in, in, in some of our situations offensively, and they do the same thing with the offensive coaches on what they should do in some situations defensively. So um, we, we, we've, uh, I think we're both, both us defensively and Alabama offensively in, in a similar situation to where it, it's not a wholesale change. I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted Tony to take this over is, is because he's been, uh, he was with Coach Patterson last year, and he was with Coach Patterson three years ago in order to understand the defensive scheme uh, because we didn't want to change it very much. I can assure you that uh, when, when Coach Saban hired Coach Kiffin, it wasn't, I want you to change the entire thing. Uh, he, he had an idea of what he wants to do offensively, which is not a whole lot different than what, what USC was doing the previous couple of years as well. So. Um, the, the philosophy is both with us defensively in the turnover and Alabama offensively in the turnover is relatively the same because it's not going to be just tremendously different. Schematically, if they do what they've done in the past, are they like anyone? You know, they seem very old school, but are they like anyone in the Big 12? Oh, yeah, I mean, football is football. You can only put... You know, you can put seven on uh, the line of scrimmage and five off the line of scrimmage, and usually one guy's taking a snap and, and, and all that. So, um, you know, there, there's some similarities in what they do and what we try to do offensively. There's some drastic differences uh, as well. Uh, you know, they're, they're more of a pro-style offense. I mean, they have the ability to be able to spread you out with really good receivers, you know, which you got to cover them, and lightens the box up, and they feel like they're in a good – position to run it, they're going to run it. They're going to try to establish the run. Um, you know, I think regardless of what offense you're looking at, I mean, whether it's ours, whether it's Baylor's, whether it's Kansas State's, you know, it's always the same. You're going to try to establish the run and then uh, make the defense commit to a, a certain number of people in the box, and then you got one-on-one -on -one matchups you try to you try to convert on. So, um, you know, when it comes to that, I think there's some similarities with everybody. <laughs> Which coaches will be in the press box? Which ones will be on the field this year? And also, how many guys you be traveling with? Uh, our tra we can travel a little bit more. We're not re we're not restricted to uh, seventy until the Texas Tech game, which I believe is game six, because uh, next week's home game, Maryland, we're not restricted. Uh, Oklahoma is a home game here. Kansas is a home game here. So it's not till game six to where we're restricted to seventy. This one. Um, you know, we're going to probably take about 80, uh, I think is what the number is right now. So um, we're, we're in good shape there. Uh, as far as coaching, you know, offensively, we're the same as we've been. You know, won't, it won't change at all. Uh, as far as uh, uh, Shannon being upstairs, um, Chris Hannon is going to be talking to our uh, uh, to Ron, to Coach Crook, uh, to because he's the, the, the GA for the offensive line. Um, you know, and then... Uh, you know, defensively, uh, Coach Mitchell will be up there. That that's no difference. You know, and then uh, they're they're just talking about this this morning. A combination of Coach Bradley and, and, and uh, Coach Cogdale. Uh, I'm not quite sure which one they got ironed out at this point. So one of the one of the D line guys, uh, Leonard uh, Anthony Leonard, will be upstairs because he's kind of the linebacker guy, and then Coach Mitchell for from the back end on defense as well. You mentioned the athleticism and the skill of both quarterbacks, Sims and Proker, but what are some of the specific nuances that you've had to kind of tell your team about just to go against each individual quarterback and be prepared? Well, you know, we, we have limited snaps to be able to, to gauge this from. I mean, neither one of them have taken a bunch of snaps. Uh, they're, 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 
they're, they're not the same quarterback. I mean, Sims has a little bit more athleticism to, to him, uh, where Coker is a bigger pocket, more pocket guy. I, I just, again, we got to be aware of who they are as far as the elusiveness of one and uh, uh, don't want to say lack thereof with the other one. But, uh, again, I mean, there, there's only so much you can prepare for. There's The, the flip side of this, that is, is I doubt they're going to have two different offenses for those two guys. There's only so much that you can prepare for as well. So uh, we, we've, uh, we've, we've talked to our guys as far as who they are, as far as what their body type is. Uh, there's not just a ton of film to be able to show them to be able to show them exactly who they are. Now there's a whole bunch of film on the rest of the guys and, and they know exactly what they're getting. And some of these receivers, they know exactly what they're getting in the running backs, the tight end and, and the offensive line as well. What's the difference in getting ready for a game as a 20 point favorite as compared to a 20 point underdog or vice versa? It doesn't affect our coaching style whatsoever. It doesn't affect our preparation whatsoever. We we don't pay attention to it. it it's it's not something that 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 affects us one way or another. Uh, I, I I think I'd be naive to say that our players don't at least look at it. They probably do a little bit, but in a game like this, first game, everybody's excited to play. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what the matchup is. It doesn't matter where you're playing it. Everybody's going to be, uh, everybody's going to be, um, you know, excited and, and, and anxious to be able to get out there for the first time. I've said this in here several different times. I believe my my biggest coaching challenge will be Sunday, regardless of what happens on Saturday, whether we're successful, whether whether we're not. Um, I think the bigger coaching challenge is going to be on Sunday, getting ready to. Uh, these guys to overcome what happened, you know, whether it's positive, whether it's negative. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that on Sunday. But uh, I, these guys are going to be ready to play. Our, 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 our guys are going to be ready to play. Alabama's guys are going to be ready to play. And, you know, you can, you can throw away favorites or underdogs or any of that. It doesn't affect, one, one, it doesn't affect anything one way or another. How do you um, gauge or measure the, uh, the overall progress of the program from I think it's night and day. Uh, I, I think it's night and day. If you just look at the the overall numbers, uh, I, I think we're better at every position. Uh, we're we're uh, you know we're working with uh, with 85 scholarships for the first time in four years. Uh, we're uh, uh, you know we we're not having to march 10, 15, 20 freshmen out there. Uh, you know right now I would say it's a face uh, a fair. Uh, I think it'd be a safe bet to say that Drayvon Henry is going to play, but he's the only freshman that's going to play. There's just a couple of redshirt freshmen that are going to be able to get out there and play as well because we've played so many true freshmen before. So I look at every single position based on what they did last year, based on the progress that they've made in the off season, and for the 23 practices we've had since August 1, and I see improvement out of either the starters or the backups at every single position across the board. Newcomer in uh, Jalen Myers, would you anticipate any snaps, even special teams for him? I would anticipate a few. I think his number is 27. I'm not sure. But uh, I would anticipate a few uh, on special teams. Uh, we've had, we had uh, Wednesday of last week to be able to gauge uh, what, what he can do. You can see his athleticism, but uh, we're, you know, to say he's going to do anything other than that right now, I think it'd be crazy. We got a few days, you know, today. We got tomorrow. We got Thursday to be able to teach him and, and coach him and watch it on film to see how he how how he, how he reacts. Coach, it was a, it was announced, uh, you know, that uh, Mitch Banks is uh, going to miss the non-conference games. Uh, uh, who do you foresee stepping in for him, and do you think that's going to put any kind of uh, he had pressure on the defense since he was a senior. <clears throat> you know, I I Icky was in a it was in a battle for for a playing time. Um, when when we pulled him off the field ten days ago or whatever it was, Terrell Chestnut's been been doing well. I mean, he's a guy that's been in the program for three years. Uh, understands what to do now. Is healthy for the first time since he's been here. He's, he was he was he was battling for that starting job. Uh, Travis Bell has been. Uh, solid has been uh, is, is good as I've ever seen him. Uh, his his physical condition is good. His his you know where he's at mentally right now I, I, I view as good. Something happens to the fifth year seniors that that, that that is important, which is why you want to have a few of them. You know they, they know this is their last 
uh, their last chance and something happens to guys like that. And I see that happening with Travis right now. Uh, so he, he's been playing well. He was in, he was in the discussion for that. Um, you know, yeah, Jalen, I don't know if he's going to get to where he can give us any snaps or not. But uh, we're, we at least got some guys to choose from. If you guys remember when we were in, in, uh, uh, two years ago when we were in some of these battles with Baylor out here and, and we were putting three or three, if I'm not mistaken, true freshmen out there at corner. So I, I think we're in a much better place. And we will welcome back Icky when he's, uh, when he's cleared here in three weeks. Will Henry start, and um, also you, you liked him a lot at the start of uh, camp, and obviously you, you and the coaches do. How much has he uh, developed and progressed since, since the start? Drayvon? Yeah. Yeah, he, he, you forget he's a freshman. He, he's the only freshman that, that are, we're having this conversation about. And again, going back to last year and two years ago, there is we're having this conversation about a, a whole bunch of them, you know, so... Uh, we we kind of forget that he's a true freshman because he's he's a mature kid. He doesn't he doesn't he doesn't have ups and downs. You know he's pretty steady. Uh, he needs to continue to improve, and I think he will. Uh, much like uh, one of one of the things with with true freshmen, with guys you've never put out there before, is is what are they gonna? What's their demeanor like, and how are they gonna respond when there's seventy thousand people in the stands and there's a real opponent across the field. I, I, I think I think based on what he's done in practice, I think he'll handle it just fine. But we got to look. We got to look and see. And it's not like Jeremy Tyler is a seasoned vet. I mean, he's a red shirt or he's a true a true sophomore. Uh, so so he's he's. We're going to continue to monitor that this week. Um, you know, the the one thing on depth charts, which I know you guys want, and uh, and, and I understand the necessity of needing it. And wanting to talk about it, uh, I'm going to have this discussion with my team here in in an hour. Uh, you know, to me, it's about competing for for snaps. If if you're if you're first or second or third, you're competing for snaps in practice on Tuesday, practice on Wednesday, practice on Thursday, throughout the course of the game, uh, throughout uh, film evaluation, and moving on to game two as well. So we will continue to monitor that and make decisions on the amount of snaps that each individual gets. I think that's probably more important than whose name's first on the depth chart. And he, didn't, he wasn't here for the spring, though, which is that Carl and, and I think Jordan were spring guys who do that as a catapult, too. It, it seems like it's overlooked. He's only been here for a brief period of time and it's so far ahead from the freshman line. Is that, I know, does it kind of underline all the stuff you're talking about, or he's come in especially prepared? Yeah, he's a good player. You know, and again, I mean, it, it, it's not, uh, it, it's it's not, it, it's not crazy just to start true freshmen. I mean, that happens at every program across the country. I mean, I, I, I think the overall health of the program is an indication of how many of them you have to use. Uh, he happens, I, I think you get to a point where if recruiting continues to improve, which I think it has over the last couple of years, then you're, you're going to get better bodies to be able to go in there and compete at an early age. Um, with that said, there's still a learning curve. You know, you look at Alabama's depth chart, and I think there's probably four or five true freshmen on their on their depth chart because they're recruiting at a pretty high level, and those guys come in, and if they're better than the ones that that are currently first or second or third, then they're going to put them in there. Did you anticipate entering fall camp that you could have a, a shot at that starting job? Or yeah, that... we had a pretty good idea. And again, we're talking about a guy that's never taken a snap here, so uh, we're going to continue to monitor his progress this week to see how he does in practice and put him out there and carefully. Uh, evaluate how he does throughout the course of a game. Did you guys find the depth on the offensive line you were looking for in camp? I think so. Um, it, 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 I think so. I mean, we got a lot of snaps at, at the guard position. Um, you know, Tyler's done a great job at center. Uh, we got two inexperienced tackles that have played in games. Um, we, we got uh, five guys that were repping uh, that don't have many snaps. So, you know, uh, if we need to play those guys, then, then you know, you got to put guys in the game for the first time at some point. You know, Marcel and, and Grant are both redshirt freshmen, haven't played yet. Cleachio hadn't played much. Um, you know, Matteo hadn't played much. Stone hasn't played much. So those backups are guys that we feel good about, but they haven't played yet, and we got to look at, at how they do once they get in there. How much of a concern is that for a game like this of this magnitude? You said why die at seventy thousand people? It's a it's concern for everybody across the country. You know, you, when you when you go into the first game with guys that haven't played in that in that uh, setting, uh, haven't played college football. Period. 
uh, of course it's, it's, uh, it's concerning. It is for everybody else across the country as well, uh, including our opponent. They got guys that haven't taken snaps either, and I'm sure they're in, the, in a very similar situation. And, uh, have, you, have you put in a uh, field goal return play? <laughs> no, because that, that would just be ridiculous. I mean, there's, or why would anybody want to do that? And how important is your tempo for you offensively? That seems like they only really haven't had trouble with it. I guess the Kings have been successful in really pushing them on that. They reeled off like night just now. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, it's been. <laughs> It's, everybody has to deal with tempo. We have to deal with, 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 with tempo. I mean, they're going to have to deal with tempo. Everybody across the country is going to have to deal with offenses uh, 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 playing up-tempo. That, that's the nature of college football. It's where everybody's going. People are making a big deal about it against Alabama. Nobody's making a big deal about Ole Miss going fast against Alabama where they shut them out. Or, <laughs> Or, or you know, some of the games, some of the other games that they played, Kentucky went fast against them and they shut them out. Uh, so they faced teams that have played up tempo, and nobody ever talked about it because they shut them out. Well, you know, against Auburn, against uh, 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 Oklahoma, uh, and against Texas A&M, you know, they they, you know, everybody's talking about that because they they won those games, but if you look at it, what they did defensively, it's not like they were giving up six, seven hundred yards. Uh, they, they were still kind of holding their own. It's just, you know, when you're, when you're talking about a defense that last year gave up 260 yards, anybody with any kind of success is what you're going to talk about. So, um, you know, it, it's something that's in our plan. I don't care who our opponent is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be in our plan to be able to do that. And hopefully over the last year, we've, we've figured out a way to be able to do that better than we did it last year because we were pretty subpar at it last year. Is it fair to say though, that you don't want to be in a situation where you're, you know, can't really pass, walk back from line of scrimmage, just line up slowly at the bottom of the end? The only thing worse than punting is punting quickly. So it, it, if, if, if we're not very good at it, then we probably shouldn't do it. And last year, there was a lot of games that I went into, um, into those games very with, with some reservations on how fast I wanted to punt. I think we're in a better place at this point. Talk about the overall program from the end of last season to this year. How about specifically offense, your comfort level from a week before the opener last year to where you are right now with these guys? Much more comfortable. I think we're better at every position. I think we're playing a very, very, very good defense. Uh, so, you know, you, you got to take into consideration who we're playing and how, how, how you feel like you can attack them. Uh, I, 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 where we're at offensively is, is night and day. Uh, starting with the coaching staff, there's a lot more continuity. We've got three coaches that, that, that are much more comfortable in, in, in coaching what we're trying to do. And then you got guys that aren't starting for the first time, which, which uh, again, puts us in a very, very much better position. When you have a guy like Daryl Worley, I mean, do you want to match him up against Amari Cooper? Will you move him side to side? Or you we don't have any choices. Right? I mean, the, you know, Mark Cooper is one of the best receivers in the country. So we're going to have to put our better guys on him, you know, but then we're going to have to cover the, uh, we're going to have to cover DeAndre White. We're going to have to cover Christian Jones as well. So they, they got, they got multiple options and, um, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they have, we have to be able to have more than Daryl Worley be able to step up to cover some guys. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank, Thank you. you.